Okay, welcome to class again. Now I'll be showing you how to make the crinoline skirt for the advanced class. The crinoline skirt is what is worn under the ball wedding gown. So we're going to make this with lining and then I showed you in the introductory video that these channels were going to be inserting bones into them. So as we go on in the tutorial, you're going to see what I mean by bones and channels. So the length of the wedding dress is 52. That's the full length. And then the half length for the corset area is 15. So the ball gown, sorry, the ball will be 52 minus 15. That is 37 inches. So we need 37 inches length of uh, fabric to achieve this ball skirt, this crinoline skirt. Okay, so the ease at the M line. You are not going to do an exact waist because it's supposed to be a free skirt that you will smoke together with the elastic band but i'll be using a rope so that somebody of the lady wearing this is a 32 waist person so somebody of 40 can also wear this skirt so i'll be making this waist ease 40 inches and then the hem line the hem line has to be wider than the waist let's come to the hem line here it's, it has to be wider than the waist so standard is from 100 inches to 120 inches so that you can have an A line effect and then you have something full at the M line. So I'll be using 100 inches for my M line and then I'll be dividing the, the, the skirts into four channels. One, two, three, four. So that means I will divide 37 by four. So I will know how many inches will be at the interval of each channel. And then remember, that we are going to have two inches allowance at the top of the skirt so that we can fold it in for the rope and then we're going to have two inches at the m line of the skirt so we can fold it in also and if you want to put another bone you can insert it here but i don't have too much bones so i'm putting just i'm not going to put it at the m line so let's go to our fabric now so remember we have 40 inches for our waistline so what I'll do is, I need, you divide 40 into 2. That means for the front block, we have 20 inches. For the back block, we have 20 inches on the M line. Oh, sorry, on the waist line. On the M, I'm using 100 inches. So 100 divided by 2 is 50. 50 inches for the front block, 50 inches for the back block. So you're going to, I've already cut this because you guys are advanced. So you don't, you know. Just let me explain, we'll get it. Okay, so now I folded my fabric, I folded into two for the front, I folded into two. So 20 divided by two will give me 10. So I marked 10 inches for the front block here on my waist, 10 inches, and I added one inch allowance. The allowance will be used in sewing the front and the back blocks together. So half inch on one side, half inch on the other side. That is one inch added to the 10. And on the M line too, on the M line, you're going to be dividing that 50 by 2. So when you fold your fabric for the front block, you measure 25 inches plus 1 inch seam allowance. So 25 times 2 will give us that 50 we need. So I've cut 26 inches on the M line and I've cut 11 inches on the waist line. So my crinoline skirt is ready. I'm using... And the suit lining if you can get the cutting lining please use it but don't use abba lining because by the time we start putting the bones abba lining has a way of creasing okay and then you could tear in the process because it's not very strong so now i'm going to be sewing the the center here i'm going to be sewing this part with half an inch and then i'll also mark my opening you know before you wear the skirt there has to be an opening so you're going to fold in the two inches allowance at the top. Don't forget to put the two inches allowance at the top and underneath. So you're going to fold this in and then you top stitch with a quarter inch like this. After top stitching, then you mark five inches for the opening of your skirt at the back. Five inches. When you mark five inches, then you sew another half inch from that five inches to the hemline all the way. So when we're done sewing, I'll show you what next to do. I have joined the side of the skirt. 
both sides and this is the hole that I left the five inches hole that I left space rather okay and so I folded in two inches and also top stitched at the waistline so now I divided my length the length I need for this skirt is 37 so I divided it by four because I want to have four channels for the bone so you can see this is one channel two three so if the length of your skirt is 40 you divide 40 by 4 that gives you 10 so you'll be marking 10 from the waist 10 10 10 like that and then I'll be folding in this edge the M line to make the last channel for the bone so what you do now is to mark it round you mark the points you divided round and after marking round On the wrong side you're going to mark the the channel the channel points and so here is the the buyer strip so here is the ready-made buyer strip white but well, what I did is I opened it up and then I ironed it straight because the bone we want to use is half inch size so the half inch is in between the buyers there's a quarter inch line on both sides so we'll be sewing with a quarter inch and then you can put in your bone at the middle so what you're going to be doing is I opened up like this under the machine I made sure that everywhere is free I opened it up like this and so you'll be placing the bias on each line that's on each row on each line and then you'll be sewing the quarter inch all the way round so you're going to be sewing it down and so when you get back to this edge let me show you the edge okay this is it when you get back to the edge to the beginning point you're going to fold in at that place you're going to fold in you can see that you're going to fold it in here okay. and then you complete the sewing but the second sewing which is the other side of the strip you are going to leave it open you can see that I left a small opening here this is where we're passing my bones into so I did that for all of them like this I've not yet sewn the second side so for this one too you open it up you sew the first one completely and then you fold in the end of it and then by the time we're sewing the upper part I'll be leaving this one inch hole again so that I'll pass my channel, my bone into that channel. So that is how we're going to do this. And then the hemline also, you're going to fold in your two inches and then you top stitch with quarter inch like this. And then we're going to pass another bone around it. For the rope, you cut two inches length. Two, sorry. You multiply your waist that's 40 you can multiply it by 2 or you use 60 and then the width of the of the rope is about 2 inches so you're just going to fold it in like this one fold it in two and then you top stitch on the two lines like this so we're assuming that this is the full rope the two inches we've cut so what you do is to fold in half inch at this edge and then you fold in another half inch and then you bend the two together to meet like this you bend the two together to meet and so you'll be top stitching the opening like that all the way to the end of the rope so that's the way i achieved this now we want to pass the bones this is the half inch size of bone so remember we've left a hole here in every channel so you're going to just push in the bone like this you push it in to come out you know to go around the first channel that's the effect of the first channel boning so now you open up again to see the second channel and then you're going to be passing the second bone into it now your bone will come in you can buy about 10 yards or 15 yards depending on how full you want 
this to be so at the end here that's where you cut it into two so when you cut you take the remaining and you insert so you're going to be cutting after passing through each channel don't cut it in pieces like this i've done it before that's why it's already in pieces so you don't cut it down you have to pass it through each channel before you cut so you're going to cut each bone to meet each other here and so you take your cello tape this is an alternative um, way of finishing the the meeting point of the bone there's a pipe we use in holding the two together but could not get that around here so you can use the cello tape let's bring it down properly so you hold the two together and then you're going to be taping it just let it overlap a bit not up to half an inch let it overlap a bit and then you'll be putting your tape around the bone You keep going like that so we've hooked the two together this way it prevents your you know if the bones are separated there's a tendency that it could bust out through the skirt when the bride wears it so this way it can never come out again so we're going to be you're going to pass needle and tr um, thread into the hand needle and then you will use it in finish This is how to cut your bone. You look for a thick scissors to do the cutting. Okay, you make sure that it's almost equal with the. So it's going to overlap a bit, and then we're going to be taping that round. That's the outcome of the cello taping. You can see. So it's already held in place. So you just push it into your skirt like that. So we're going to do the last one now. And that's the end result of your crinoline skirt so if for a small waist person you just smoke the the rope at the side you smoke it well so that it can you know go into the waist and give you a fuller effect at the base thanks for watching